Here among the reeds surrounding ponds that feel gross when you step in them live some extraordinary creatures. They are in the order Odonata and have existed for more than 300 million years with only minor changes. Here, the majestic dragonfly. <laughs> well, that moment's ruined. And the damselfly. <laughs> really? I'm trying for gravitas here. This looks like a stalker you'd feel sorry for. All right. While the dragonfly may have gotten luckier at the naming ceremony, these damsels are not of the in-distress variety. More like, fuck with me and I will bite your face off. The ones you never really hear about in the fairy tales. To understand the marvel of biology and engineering that is the Odinate, we must begin in the waters below. Their lives begin as cute little larval nymphos, oh, sorry, typo, nymphs. Unlike the caterpillar, which takes a time out in a sleeping bag to transform into adulthood, Odinate larvae continuously molt, shedding their outsides up to 17 times before they reach their adult form. These cute little bibbies are carnivorous hunters from the start. When they are small, they eat small things like the tiny crustacean Ostracoda. Kind of looks like he's just eating the faces off those things. More into the cookie than the cream, as my mother used to say. As they grow, however, they devour almost anything they can catch with the moxie of a drunk college student who found half a breakfast burrito in their mini fridge. Some nymphs stalk their prey out in the open, while others, like skimmer dragonfly nymphs, are ambush hunters, taking a page from the bobbit worm and hiding in their hidey holes before they pounce. They will even, on occasion, eat their own. And just a side note here, but if you're planning on doing this, start with the head. But first, cannibalism is not a good look for any species. Nobody wins. Odinate nymphs hunt using their labia, sorry, labium, plural, Important distinction, the following has nothing to do with the human labia, which thankfully has not evolved in this direction, yet. The odinate labium is like a weaponized lower lip. At rest, it is tucked up beneath the head like a bent elbow, and it has the ability to shoot out suddenly and grab or impale unsuspecting prey, pulling them back to the mouth in between two serrated edges or grasped in specialized pincers. These labium are powered hydraulically. Water is drawn in through the butt, as it should be, and a good clenching creates enough internal pressure to cause the labium to pop out like the eyes on one of those little squeezy stress dolls. You can try this at home. All you need is a bathtub, a muffin, and a go get em attitude. Nothing will happen, but you might lose a roommate. Now, the anus of the dragonfly nymph is not your ordinary run-of-the-mill anus. Let's try this. Close your eyes, go ahead and picture an anus. Put a little hat on it if you want. Whatever you're thinking right now, it's not that. That is your very own imaginary anus. You're welcome. You can keep it. <laughs> Unlike the damselfly, which has external gills, the dragonfly nymph's gills are inside its butt. No judgment. That is where it breathes. At the end of the dragonfly nymph abdomen, it has something called an anal pyramid. Trust me, don't Google this term. This isn't a pyramid made from anuses. That would be different. This is five rigid structures that can close the nymph's butt, which helps it with the butt breathing, but also assists in locomotion. Water can be expelled forcefully in a sort of fart jet, allowing it to avoid predators, chase prey, or just do it for fun. I would. I'm doing it right now. After up to six years in the water, the Odinate nymph is near its final transformation. An intricate system of tubes within its body will have to transition from getting oxygen from its gills to breathing air through spiracles, little holes in its body's external surface. This hardcore little bastard leaves the water behind and ventures out into the world. It finds a perch, and like a hipster trying to get out of a pair of tight skinny jeans, it must wriggle and contort itself. With one final sit-up, it is free from the last shell of its larval skin. I have to say, that looks like it would be very satisfying. Like popping a zit. Except you are the zit, and what comes out of it. 
Adult Odinates may live for only a few weeks or up to a year, and with mating season approaching, it's time for fairy wings and fur. Kind of like getting ready for Burning Man, but without the arguments over who's bringing the weed and who's bringing the nutter butters. The newly emerged adult is tenoral or soft and must harden while blood-like hemolymph is pumped into its swelling veiny wings. <laughs> Damselfly adults generally have long, slender abdomens, wide-set eyes, and wings that rest like a roof. They have names like Eunice or Marvin. Is he cleaning his butt with a raindrop? <laughs> it's like a line from a poem. Dragonflies tend to be a bit more meaty, eyes <laughs> closer together, and wings spread out at rest. They have names like Day <laughs> or Carol. While human entrance to adulthood is marked by pimples, useless hair on our genitals, and college debt, the adult Odinate gets frickin' wings. We totally get screwed. These two pairs of ultra-flexible wings look a bit like stained glass windows that were made by a coke addict being attacked by a squirrel, who was also a coke addict. Each wing is attached to the thorax by separate muscles and can be maneuvered independently allowing it to fly upside down, backwards, basically however it wants, reaching speeds up to 30 miles per hour. To catch their prey, they have traded in their labium for three pairs of legs, each with a flexy-flexy foot ending in a pair of claws. The front legs are often conveniently equipped with little spiny brushes that are used to clean their ginormous freaking eyeballs. These magnificent balls of eye can see in almost all directions and are built from 30,000 highly sensitive pixel-like amitidia that can sense all sorts of light, including ultraviolet wavelengths, the ones we use to look for stains on motel room bedspreads. Which is why you never see a dragonfly in a motel. <laughs> Very kissable lips on this one. <laughs> All of these parts, wings, legs, and eyes, come together in a symphony of death. But these are no ordinary hunters. In laboratory settings, scientists have used their sciences to observe Odinates catching 90% of the mosquitoes they stalk. Their tiny little brain can hone in on a specific insect and appears to be able to predict where it's heading. It then coordinates its head, body, and wings to find an optimal flight path which disguises its motion as it approaches. This allows it to intercept its prey in a sort of aerial ambush rather than just chasing it from behind. From a scientist's point of view, this is a marvel of nature. From the mosquito's point of view, it's more like... Ah, nom nom. But the hunter can also become... Well, dead. Lauren had ironically just taken up knitting. Joshua responded to a Craigslist ad for flying lessons. And although Libby was great at avoiding frogs, she is currently under the windshield wiper of a Hyundai. Those that survive, however, are ready for sexy time, which is slightly more complicated than whatever took place to make you. The Odinate penis is located on its second abdominal segment. However, its gonads, the parts that produce sperm, are located down on the ninth segment. In technical terms, there is a great distance between the nutsack and the timmy. Like if you had testicles hanging down on your ankles, like the little bells on an elven shoe. To mate, the male must put his gonads in contact with his penis to transfer sperm. Then, using claspers on the end of his body, he grasps a female's head. She then curls up her genitals to meet his mid-belly penis. And what a penis it is! It has specialized bristled lobes which are used to scrape out the previous suitor's sperm so that things don't get mixed up. Think of it as putting that little divider in between your groceries at the checkout line. And imagine that your groceries were sperm. Same, same, but different. Try finding this position on Pornhub. It's complicated. Sometimes you have to watch to figure it out. Oh, that's nice, giving him a closer view. At the end of the female abdomen, there is a single genital opening and a small ovipositor, which will be used to deposit her fertilized eggs. After mating, males will often stay attached or hang out nearby to help out, but also to make sure that their sperm doesn't get scraped out by some other dude. 
Some females, like this southern spreadwing damselfly, lay eggs inside the stems of plants, even venturing under the water with an assist or diving solo. This young couple is in search, oh, forget it, for some a nice bit of mud will do. Maybe baby wants the pound scum, or maybe the eggs are placed right freaking over here and here. However it happens, the circle of life for the Odinate is now complete. David? David, no, I need you to push. David? All right. Now pick a place and push, okay? David? Oh, Jerome, could you show David how to push? All right. David, you realize that's making it harder for me, not easier. <laughs> 